This is Andy Porwell for Boxing News. I'm joined by a slightly blinded promoter, Eddie Hearn. There. Eddie, your man Lee Wood has picked up his old world title there with a unanimous decision victory against Maurizio Lara. Just walk me through that performance and how happy you are for it. Stunning performance because, you know, he frustrated him, he schooled him, he beat him up. Um, you know, some will say, oh, Lara was flat. He just got frustrated and he got beaten up and probably a little bit flat because he had lost his world title before he got in the ring. But, you know, he was desperate to win, couldn't get it over the line. But I thought a great performance from Leewood. Showed tremendous heart to take the fight even back, you know, earlier this year. And obviously more heart to take the rematch, more heart to take the, the fight when Lara came in nearly a weight division above. And, you know, pleased for Ben Davison as well, because got a lot of criticism. And I thought it was a fantastic performance. Eddie, people questioned with, the, with all of the weight issues whether or not the fight should go ahead. Obviously, yeah. on the back of the first fight, people questioned if it was too soon for it. Yeah. How justified of a decision does this feel now? Yeah, because they know what they're doing, you know, and the weight was a difficult decision because Ben gets a lot of criticism through it. You know, people were talking about, oh, just, you know, put, call the fight off and then fight for the vacant belt. What? When? Who? He's not even a mandatory. It would have been Komatov against Ray Ford. So Lee would have to really bite the bullet and just take the fight really they they um, had an agreement to weigh this morning because they wanted to see what he weighed and Lara was happy to do that he wasn't heavy Lee was heavier and it was the right decision and uh, it paid off tonight obviously we know Lee's got that ambition that desire to fight the city ground he's also mentioned a unification what would you like to deliver for him next week yeah I mean you know you know there's a mandatory pending against Komatov who's a great fighter it's not a big fight you know Lee said he's probably got two fights left and Komatov's probably not, with all due respect to him, on that list. And he's good, you know. And I think the Warrington fight's the one that makes sense. You know, I'd love to see if we there's a way to make that fight. Um, but we'd have to be quickly. You know, Lee's got a little nick there. We'll have to speak to the WBA. He's a new champion. Sometimes you get a chance to make a quick voluntary. But we'll see what's next. Obviously, I know we didn't watch it, but Luis Alberto Lopez defeating Mark Khan. Any chance in, in Lopez yeah, would? for sure. It's a great fight. I mean, uh, Lee wants to unify. He wants to fight the city ground. He wants to fight Warrington. And he's only got a couple of fights left, so we'll see. Just walk me through the card as well, please, Eddie. I thought Jack Cattrall was fantastic. You know, Foley, brilliant. I mean, didn't stop trying to win. Uh, out for 15 months. He's ready for those big fights now. Regis Progre, or even a return here in September in a big fight. Um, Terry Harper, really pleased for her after a very tough week. Danny Ball, I thought, would look really good for the English title. Aki Fia has come for a brutal knockdown. He showed a lot of heart there. Good wins for Aaron Bowen. Campbell Hatton with another stoppage win. And William Crawl, I thought, boxed well on his debut. Hatton and Fiaz, is that something which we could yeah, see? I think so. I mean, I still think that, you know, Campbell's slightly behind Aki, but with the knockdown tonight, maybe they might start fancying that fight. And I think, give it six months, I think we'll be talking about it. Eddie, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's going to ask you tonight, but obviously we saw George Warren's comments that a formal offer has been sent across. Can you just give us a few more details? No, not really. I mean, there was no contract. There's no, I mean, formal offer. He just sent an email saying, look, we'd like to make the fight in September. We know the terms from last time. Let's discuss. Um, I called him straight away. We had a chat. Um... I think it's difficult to take Tyson too seriously at the moment with everything he's been saying. AJ certainly doesn't, but it's my job to take them seriously. George, you know, has told me they want to make the fight. I believe George, but also I don't know if Anthony will give up August and December on the hope of a Tyson Fury fight in September. Um, we'll see what happens in Saudi this week. That's the fight we're planning for him against Deontay Wilder. Obviously, it's a huge fight and a huge money fight as well and he's fighting in August but the Tyson Fury fight's a huge fight so we'll definitely explore it we definitely won't base our career and plans around Tyson Fury but it's my job to to go through the motions it's obviously early stages yet but when you look at how AJ's career could play out for the rest of this year what do you think is more likely say Dillian in August and then yeah, that Wilder yeah, fight yeah, or? that's the favourite right now and you know he's in training for that he, he would have to give up the August fight and the Wilder fight in Saudi on the hope of fighting Tyson Fury in September. It's a massive fight. He wants to fight Tyson Fury, but he also wants to fight in August and he also loves the Wilder fight in Saudi. So, again, he's got fantastic options. Tyson Fury ain't got many options right now. It's, you know, it's kind of tight. Tables have turned a little bit, but, you know, no back and forward. It's a huge fight and we'll go through the motions. Final one on AJ, cut off points for whether it be White in August, whether it be the Fury fight or whether it be Saudi. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, Right now, we're full steam ahead for August and Deontay Wilder in December. We are, like I said, we'll see what happens in Saudi Arabia this week. Um, we're being told by them, this fight is on, this fight is happening. Till we get a formal contract, that's not the case. But we've worked with them before, we know they're serious, and that is our plan. If that plan does not happen, 100% the Tyson Fury fight is the fight to make. But 
Is it the fight to make instead of those two? We'll have to see. Um, we'll make sure that AJ fights when he wants to fight and uh, he can, we can make the biggest fights out there. Just a final one, Eddie. Obviously, I know it was in your show. We saw highlights, though, of Chris Billum Smith defeating Lawrence Coley. Just your thoughts on, on that fight and that outcome? Yeah, I haven't seen it. I mean, I know it's points deduction and, and um, okay. yeah. And I'm pleased for Chris. You know, he's a really nice guy. And I said before, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but he wasn't someone that you'd think would go on and become a world champion. And he's done it through consistency and hard work. And Shane's done a great job with him. And, you know, I'm, I'm pleased for him. Um, obviously, Lawrence will be disappointed. I think there's a rematch clause, which will be difficult because... That fight worked in Bournemouth. Where do you do the rematch? You know, you can't go to the O2 with that fight. It's just not going to sell. So, but Lawrence was the champion. He gave him a shot, and he'll get get his return. So, good luck to everyone. Eddie, a pleasure as always. Thank you. Cheers, mate.